today we're looking at sow culture. So when I was working at the University of Kent, I worked on jerkat sow cultures, which are suspension sow cultures. This means that sows aren't adhered to the bottom of flasks. They are in suspension. And the way I filmed it was using one of these, a GoPro strapped to a head strap. And the reason I use this is because I need my hands to do the sow culture. One of the issues I had with the head strap was that it was sometimes pointing too high. So I apologize for any footage that, which isn't in focus or it's not framed correctly. So jumping straight into it, we are starting with the media. So I started with a RPMI 1640 Glutamax media and I added 10% fetal bovine serum I added 1% antibiotics, which were streptomycin and penicillin. Usually these things are frozen, especially if you're storing fetal bovine serum for a long time, you want to have it frozen. And generally when you order antibiotics, you can split them into smaller aliquots of the desired quantity. In this case, because we've got a media of 500 mils, we need 50 mils, of, which is the 10% of the fetal bovine serum, and then finally, five mils of antibiotics so that we can make up a 555 mil stock of media to culture our Jerkat T cells in. So what we see here is our media on the right hand side, far right IMS, which is just to spray everything, make sure everything's sterilized to get rid of any bacteria. And in the middle, we have our water bath. Our water bath here is important so that, as I mentioned, we can warm up that fetal bovine serum and our antibiotics that we've frozen down into smaller aliquots or just ordered in smaller batches so that we can add straight into our media. Because of the throughput we were doing on this project, we decided to go for smaller quantities because we would culture up a lot and then process. And this is part of that Ohms project I may have spoken about and you may have heard about but essentially we were trying to separate T cells from whole blood. So we start at the beginning with just looking at T cells, which in this case were Jerkat T cells. So they're a bit easier to play with because they're the immortalized cancer cell line and use them to test our initial separation using our microfluidic devices. One of the first things we also need to do is spray down our cell culture hood before we do anything inside. So the way we sterilize a cell culture hood is by spraying the entire thing with IMS, grabbing a paper towel and wiping it all down. And it is fundamental that we make sure that we have a clear path from the back of the cell culture hood to the grill at the front. Most cell culture hoods work by using a sterile air kind of shield to stop bacteria entering from outside by creating this positive pressure. So things are always pushing outwards and that's disrupted if you have things like the pet tips, the cell culture media, falcon tubes to anything that may block that path of air traveling across our cell culture hood. It should be noted that we never ever open the media, the fetal bovine serum or the antibiotics outside of the hood. And this is simply for sterility, that we want to keep everything as sterile as possible. And this is fundamental to keeping our cell cultures nice and healthy without any contamination. When we get contamination, that generally means we need to throw away the entire cell culture and start again. So here, when we were working at the University of Kent, we kept a lot of our materials a lot of our consumables down the side of the cell culture hood, which really isn't ideal, but as long as everything is protected, is kept within that cell packaging before we open it, it should be fine in the cell culture hood as long as we spray it down with the IMS. And again, this is gonna be a repeating theme in this video that you need to spray everything with IMS before entering this cell culture hood. So as you can see here, I grabbed some five mil stripettes. It was five mil stripettes because I was starting a new cell culture. So I had my frozen T cells or Jerkat T cells in the minus 80 freezer. So I was thawing them by sticking them into the heated water bath and quickly transferring them to a falcon tube, centrifuging them down to create this pellet to then wash the media over the top. 
And the reason why we want to do this so fast is because when we freeze our Jercat T-cells, we use something called DMSO, which is dimethyl sulfoxide. And this is a great agent when we're freezing it because of its membrane penetration and water displacement properties. This means that it reduces ice formation and thereby prevents cell death during the freezing process. So one of the key things as well is making sure that we label absolutely everything, be it our media, the fetal bovine serum, the antibiotics, to the cells, everything. And that's simply so that we can track where it is. And this is very important when you're working in a shared laboratory like I was, where there are many different teams working on different parts of projects. And to give an example, one of the concerns that was raised, they thought my cell culture was contaminated. It hadn't become contaminated. What had happened was that because I'm using suspension cell cultures, they weren't accustomed to seeing the media being slightly cloudy. And that's because suspension cells generally are in suspension. They're not adhered to the bottom of the cell flask, unlike adherent cell cultures, as the name suggests. So one of the key things which I somewhat glossed over, using aseptic techniques, when you're unscrewing the cap on a falcon tube, that you don't put the cap down. Or if you do, you put it down so it's not face up. So you don't put the screw part of the cap facing upwards, and that's because bacteria can deposit inside that screw lid. I have enough dexterity on my hand so that I can hold the lid whilst petting in and out, but some biologists prefer to just put the lid down. It's out of the way, you can easily then prepare in and out of that falcon tube. And Eva's fine because the cell culture hood should be completely sterile. So because we're in a shared lab, there's a lot of shared utilities. One of the shared utilities was this centrifuge. And this centrifuge looks a bit outdated, but it was perfect for what we wanted, which was a low g-force to pull our cells out of suspension and deposit at the bottom and for this we were using quite skinny falcon tubes because we were only using i believe it was about one to two mils of frozen jerkat cells which were concentrated down when i initially froze them but for this we want to put them directly into the skinny falcon tubes which are about 15 mil capacity and just get that pellet forming. And then we can remove that supernatant, resuspend in our lovely clean media and hopefully everything should be good and we'll see some cells growing within the next couple of days to weeks. Here I have the two skinny falcon tubes. You might be able to just about make out the small pellet at the bottom. I promise you it's there. It's just very difficult to capture on camera. And the difference in media color solutions happens to just be the aging of the media when I initially froze down my cells. That's no indication on the quality of the cells in that pellet, nor that there's anything wrong at this stage. Just media over time can age and change like color, and that's nothing really to be concerned about at all. But obviously, if you can, use fresh media and try to use it within the allotted time frame recommended by the manufacturer. So again, as you can see, I pick up the IMS. So I've sprayed the falcon tubes that cells are in. There are cell biologists that swear that they don't need to spray it after it's been in the centrifuge. I personally am on the side of spray everything. It doesn't matter and the lid should be tight enough on those cells that the IMS or ethanol, whichever you may be using to sterilize, shouldn't get in and affect those cells. And as you can see already in the hood, I've got some T25 flasks, which are some of the smallest cell culture flasks you can get. And with them, I've sprayed them with IMS. So I should know everything you're doing here, ideally, you should keep to the edges again, as I mentioned, to maintain the airfield but also try to plan ahead when you're doing cell culture. If you know you're going to use X amount of stripettes, spray them all and get them in the cell culture hood so then you're not constantly entering and leaving it when you've got the cells in the cell culture hood. And this is again all about sterility. The less you disrupt this air field which is created in the cell culture hood, the less likely you are to get a contamination of your samples. So limit the amount of time the cells are out in the cell culture hood and exposed, essentially, and always try to plan ahead. 
So you'll see here I've just put in the media. I've got my stripette. I open the media. Ideally, before you touch any stripettes and everything, you can loosen the lids on the sows and on the media. Again, only ever do that inside the sow culture hood. Never do it outside because you risk that contamination as we mentioned. And doing it inside the hood should be fine. With the lid ever so slightly loose, that just means it's a bit easier to handle when, as you can see now, I'm holding it in my hand, I can just un simply unscrew it. And I'm not struggling to kind of grip it with one hand and undo that lid. So you also notice in this scene that I'm using an automatic stripette and I do a motion with my fingers up and down. And as you can see with the liquid inside the stripette, that is going up and down. And that's simply so that we resuspend that pellet and break it up a little bit because the pellet is just a bunch of sounds stuck together in a clump, be it a pellet. And we need to mix the media across it so that we can gently, so we can break up that pellet so that it's distributed homogeneously throughout that solution. And it's not just got one large clump because otherwise we'll most likely get a necrotic core and lose a lot of our sows. And this is very important to consider when we are working with sows that have just been thawed because again, we need to get rid of all of that DMSO in the most efficient way possible. So by breaking up that pellet, we don't end up with sows that possibly won't get exposed to that media and get washed. So another thing I haven't mentioned is that I set up a small skinny falcon tube with the lid off in the hood. And the reason I leave the lid off and it's just there inside the hood is because it's just for waste. So when we remove that supernatant off the top of our pellet, we want to ensure that we have somewhere to put that liquid. Some people can use aspiration where you have this, uh, where you have a line where you can easily just suck the supernatant off and it's just deposited into a waste system essentially, which is attached to the cell culture hood. But if you don't have that, just set up a small falcon tube and remove that supernatant and you can just deposit it in there and then dispose of it later. And when you're using a stripette and you get it out of the packaging, never ever touch that stripette. The idea of the packaging is that you can just hold on to it and stick the automatic pet bit at the top. So you can just tear it in a way that you never touch it. If you do touch it, it's probably best to use another stripette because again, we really want to limit the exposure our sows have to the outside world. And we know our strip pets in the packaging is completely sterile. So why risk contamination when we can just use another strip pet? So now just tidying up, every time that we are done the hood, we want to spray everything and make sure the lids are screwed tight. Give it a brief spray on the automatic strip pet we may use, get rid of any spare strip pets that we have from the sow culture hood, and just make sure it's a nice tidy, presentable manner so that other people can use it. Notice this technique where I start at the back and move forward. That's because I don't want to reach over a part that I've already rubbed and introduce bacteria. I just want to use that paper towel to move the IMS across that surface, working from the back to the front without introducing any bacteria or contamination within that sow culture hood. 